Daniel Hazario. Um, so the uh, original speaker uh, actually cannot make it today due to visa issues. So I'm the standing uh, speaker for him. So my name is Chu Huang. Um, I also work in Huawei and uh, actually I'm most leading the uh, AI open source ecosystem. So I actually have a talk tomorrow. Um, so this talk is about uh, Euromaker is the build system for our uh, one of our like uh, biggest open source operating system uh, project. Okay, first of all, uh, what is Open Euler? So Open Euler is a, a, a new open source operating system. Uh, think of it like uh, CentOS, uh, SUSE. So it's it's. Uh, it's very similar uh, to those OSs. Um, so OpenEuler was uh, open sourced uh, at the end of uh, 2019. So now it's uh, four or five years. Uh, during the four or five years, actually, we uh, we managed to uh, quite successfully uh, build a, a, a quite big uh, open source ecosystem. So. Uh, the position of OpenEuler is not actually centered around an uh, operating system per se, but to uh, develop a system to build systems. So uh, this is a slogan you will hear a lot uh, if you attend OpenEuler conferences. So that's why you can see um, so just one OS source uh, for a, a lot of scenarios and uh, for a lot of uh, OSs. So as I mentioned, although it's only four or five years old, uh, we've uh, dramatically increased the, the, the size of the community. Uh, it's now, I think, one of the largest open source community in China. And uh, OpenEuler is also hosted at the uh, Open Item Foundation. It's it, it does not belong to Huawei or any other company. It, it belongs to an open source foundation very similar to Open Infra, which all of us are attending for today. Um, so this is a like general landscape of Open Euler, as you can see, is pretty massive. Since we position Open Euler as a system to build systems, so it's a gigantic platform actually. To build things, so in Open Euler we have a lot of projects uh, dealing with issues like cloud native embedded, uh, a lot of infrastructure, and of course for any open source uh, operating systems you have to deal with kernel, you have to deal with drivers, and uh, security issue. Um, so as you can see, Open Euler is a quite big uh, open ecosystem. So, um, the subject tenant of this talk is uh, uh, Euromaker. Euromaker is actually at the heart of Open Euler. Uh, this is the build system that enables Open Euler to build a lot of things I just mentioned. Um, so, if you ever work with uh, things like SUSE uh, or CentOS, you know that. Uh, um, build systems are quite critical. For example, um, Kubernetes now are migrating from GCD uh, to the community infra, so they're using the OBS, the open build system from SUSE. Um, for anyone that ships deliveries, ships the uh, software releases, uh, they knew that the build process could be very troublesome and even painful, uh, I would say. So Euromaker was designed uh, from the point of view of uh, developers that are doing releases. We want to make sure that uh, Euromaker could be a, a, a new build platform to ease all the pain and sufferings uh, uh, one typically would encounter, encounter with the build system. Um, so. Uh, the core tenant of Euromaker is uh, it support a layered customization so that you can piece um, 
everything that you need for your uh, for your release uh, together, not not to like uh, uh, be bind with certain uh, requirement. So uh, as you can hear, uh, as you can see here, you you can combine like different layers of your uh, component uh, into the package build that you actually build all the software packages and then you build the image and ship the image as your uh, deliverable. Um, so here are uh, some important aspects uh, from Euler Maker. Uh, I, I, so there are six of them, so I, I just want to mention the most uh, important ones. So the first one is uh, we we want to enable you to uh, change from red specs to red in, uh, YAMLs. Uh, so if you uh, have like uh, developed uh, the, 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 uh, releases for operating systems, uh, you are familiar with spec. Um, so spec is, I think, okay. Uh, it's, it's command line uh, structures. However, it's not, uh, it's not expressive. And also compared to YAML, uh, YAML has very uh, elegant uh, expression of uh, all the fields, all the uh, important uh, uh, values that you need to set uh, for configurement. Uh, so the most important thing for Unimaker is to enable this transition uh, transition from running spec to running YAML. Um, the other one is uh, uh, be able to uh, actually to customize uh, your different like uh, uh, the OS you want to build to customize it uh, towards uh, different scenarios. I think uh, this is uh, very important. So at the moment, uh, you can see you, you will have a lot of different hardwares, so x86, ARM, and also RISC 5 that they're not counting a lot of AI hardwares and uh, a lot of embedded uh, hardwares. And also you will uh, probably need to ship it to either desktop or server or a embedded environment or via VMs or containers. So that gives you a uh, headache of uh, uh, n multiples n, right? So you, you have to manually uh, uh, match all these scenarios for your build. Uh, so with your maker, uh, with the correct configuration, it dramatically helps you like, reduce a lot of the uh, pain of the matching. And just a couple of quick uh, click through, and you can generate the target build that you, you want for your specific uh, scenario or environment. Okay, the first thing I mentioned, the uh, important piece is to migrate from spec to YAML. Um, so, as I mentioned, uh, YAML is a, a, a quite a nice, modern, and uh, expressive uh, format. Uh, it does not come with, like, like without its shortcomings. Uh, if you ever played with Kubernetes, you know YAML could be also uh, bring some problems from time to time because your configuration system has to be able to read through all the uh, YAMLs uh, rather uh, correctly. However, the transition from spec to YAML is still a big uh, step forward. Uh, the second thing, the customization I just mentioned. Um, as you can see, there are a lot of fields support in Euromaker that you can set, uh, for example, uh, for build uh, choices. Uh, you might have a lot of flags uh, you need to set, and also um, uh, a lot of the, the, the uh, optional features that uh, uh, you want to ship for uh, like debug, for static deployment, uh, as a uh, for security, etc. So there are a lot of fields that I think we have a UI and you just click through it and uh, uh, 
kilometer will generate the desired output for you. Um, so layer customization uh, is very important feature from uh, Euromaker. Uh, so here is just a, a, I think, one example. Say you have a robot, uh, robotic arms, right? And you want to ship something that runs with rows one or rows two, whatever, on that on that chip with the base uh, operating system. So with Euromaker, as I just mentioned, you can just select through the, for example, you want to select uh, the build target as rows and select one of the supported PSPs uh, in this board uh, service package uh, for your chip, uh, for your robotic arm, and uh, the base OS is, op uh, is always open your, uh, so you can quickly ship a open your base, um, customize uh, operating system for your robotic arm, so it, uh, it made things quite easy or easier compared to uh, always. So this is somewhat uh, detailed, okay, not, not so detailed. So uh, one of the big problems for the build system in runtime, so when you're actually building things, um, uh, one of the major problem is actually how to uh, how to schedule it uh, because the view system uh, tends to encounter a lot of problems. For example, dependencies. You might have outdated dependencies. For example, um, that uh, there are conflicts, right? And also there will be um, uh, like. Uh, and snapshots were not made correctly, you need to find a, a correct snapshot. So all in all, the scheduling uh, aspect of the view system it, uh, uh, is one of uh, the things that uh, create major headaches in a runtime. So for Euromaker, it ships with the, uh, I think, didn't mention the slides, but it ships with the DEG uh, direct direct and civic graph based uh, scheduling system so that all the, dependen uh, all the dependencies uh, will be constructed uh, as a dead graph uh, to solve the things I mentioned, like the conflicts, like the uh, outdated dependencies, uh, other problems. Uh, another one is actually to preserve uh, many of the build histories. Uh, for example, the, um, a lot of build, build system uh, does not contain history. And then uh, you encounter a lot of the uh, mistakes during the uh, build process. So this is another area that Euromaker actually very good at. Okay, we, um, we also build a uh, uh, pretty good uh, infrastructure for the Euromaker to run on. Um, so it's a, a distributed lab. Um, so in Huawei, we have our, uh, like, uh, you can think of like a, a donated compute resource for the open user community. So Huawei lab, uh, you, uh, we have many cloud providing resources, uh, not restricting to Huawei cloud, but also in China, there are Tencent clouds, uh, Ali clouds, uh, etc. And also with hardware uh, providers, for example, the Naro actually runs a uh, integration lab. Uh, it also provides some of the resources for the uh, for the Unimaker uh, program. So it's a distributed lab system. Um, yeah, customization. I think I already covered this one. So you just piecemeal the things you need and uh, Euromaker will help you to ship the desired uh, format for your use. I think this, the UI I just, I think I mentioned before. Um, so a lot of fields, you can just uh, select the things you want, click through them, uh, avoid all the headaches, and okay, there are example uh, you can customize doing a Redis 
a package. You can customizing a Docker image with Ubuntu as the base image uh, with Redis on it. Um, so it's pretty easy. Okay, uh, here are all the like, links uh, you can get with Ubuntu. Uh, at the moment, is a still very largely China based, but uh, starting this year, we are really looking forward to build a open source global ecosystem. So outside China, for example, South Korea would be a, a great uh, a, a community for us to reach out. So uh, we, we have an account on Twitter, uh, now called X, and also on YouTube, also on LinkedIn, you can follow that. Uh, we have a, a, a very up-to-date uh, up English version of the uh, official website you can check and uh, uh, feel free to try it out and uh, reach out to us with any problems you can uh, submit uh, actually we did a mirror site on github you can i think you can submit uh, issues on github okay um so as i mentioned my own talk actual talk is tomorrow and uh, if you're interested in heterogeneous computing uh, meaning for accelerators, uh, you are welcome to join my talk tomorrow uh, in the other room. Uh, I think I have quite a lot of time, so I'll just uh, advertise my talk. Uh, so my talk will be about uh, OpenStack Cyborg. Uh, it's a really interesting project that I and uh, many other friends started uh, in OpenStack seven years ago. Uh, as far as I know, it's the only open source project that can provide general management of FPGAs, GPUs, SmartX, uh, even NVMe based uh, SSD arrays. Uh, so it's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, come uh, see my talk tomorrow. Okay, that's it. Any questions? One question. Sure. Is it, maybe it is very poor question. Uh, what is the difference with the uh, Yopt project? Oh, good question. Hello? So, we actually use Yopt before Yolimaker, um, uh, especially for our embedded builds. Uh, however, from uh, when the like uh, uh, the projects grows bigger, we had to ship a lot of um, like artifacts for a different scenario. Yakto uh, uh, actually would be uh, too messy for us. That's why we make the uh, the Euro Maker our new build system. Uh, so Euro Maker now could like uh, you can use it to build the. Uh, OS image for server and also for the embedded system. So, like from four gigabyte, uh, twenty gigabyte to uh, megabytes. So, yeah, we we, we actually use Yocto. Yeah. Uh, 